Echo Bank Transnational, which began life in Togo in the 1980s, has ridden the boom in African banking. It has bold regional ambitions and a network stretching across 33 nations. But the Financial Times has seen documents that suggest some shareholders are unhappy with the bank's leadership at a crucial time. Well, our Africa editor, William Wallace, joins me now to explain more. William, you've seen some, uh, some documents, you've been through them with a, with a fine comb. Could you just uh, start by explaining briefly what exactly is going on at Echo Bank? Well, I have a letter here from the Central Bank of Nigeria to Echo Bank, uh, dated in April, in fact, which notifies the bank of what it calls huge, outstanding, non-performing facilities held by uh, businesses associated with Colapo Lawson, the chairman of the bank. Um, and it says that it alleges that he failed to repay these facilities despite promising to uh, many times. Um, and in view of this, the central bank considers him unfit to head a holding company that has Echo Bank as its major subsidiary in Nigeria. So have the chairman and the chief executive at Echo Bank responded to this yet? Well, there are several issues. Some of uh, the, the shareholders are unhappy that, uh, uh, that they say uh, the board wasn't fully kept fully informed about the, the matter of these debts and the central bank concerns. Um, Miss, uh, both the chairman and the CEO have responded saying that since the Central Bank of Nigeria sent the letter, uh, there have been discussions and Mr. Lawson, the chairman, has come to an arrangement with Amcon, which is the um, as uh, asset company that was set up to absorb non-performing assets following the 2009 banking crash in Nigeria, um, and that the, the allegations by the Central Bank have now been put to rest. Now, which investors are we, are we talking about here? Who specifically is upset with the chairman, Mr. Lawson? Well, another document I have here um, is dated this month, and it comes from the Public Investment Corporation, which is a huge fund, uh, South African fund, which manages uh, public sector employees' pay, uh, pensions in South Africa. And it became a leading stakeholder in Echo Bank last year. Uh, it does raise concerns about the way this matter has been handled and, and, is, uh, seek, uh, and is requesting an urgent board meeting to, 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 to discuss it. Uh, but uh, Mr. Lawson, the chairman, has told me there will be, that no such meeting is planned. And are the South Africans the only ones who are concerned? Uh, no, I think I've spoken to other individual shareholders and I understand that there are two other major institutional shareholders that have raised concerns about this matter at board meetings. Now from the very start, um, Echo Bank positioned itself as a pan-African bank with a mission to build a new Africa, but is this really a more of an old Africa affair and um, what, what does it say about the, the outlook for Echo Bank? Well I think Echo Bank is a very unique institution. It was set up in 1985. Um, with lots of mostly private shareholders across 14 West African countries. Uh, it was also, it was, it was never a bank that had one specific country, so it had a very special ethos, which attracted lots of Africans from different countries to work for it. Um, and its mission really was to uh, develop African economies and integrate them. Uh, I think there's some tension in the bank between those who set out with that mission historically and, and those who are more conscious of its commercial role now that it's become a listed bank uh, across, uh, across three different stock exchanges, Abidjan, Accra and Lagos. Um, that's one issue. But I think the, there's an issue of corporate governance, uh, according to some shareholders involved in this, which uh, I think the, the, the bank may have to address at this point. William Wallace, thank you very much. Thank you very much.